Coming up, the June 2024 Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife. I get a new one from Dirk Pinkerton and Artisan Cutlery. And then 10 nasty non-knife mostly implements for EDC. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Jason Scott 9606. He says, happy Father's Day, Bob. Thank you, sir. And thank you for another great interview. I'm definitely going to check out Dawson Knives. They look awesome, and I love that they're a family business. I'm an Arizonan, born in Phoenix, and it's great to find out that they are from Prescott, Arizona. I've only been in the knife hobby about five or six years, but it's always cool learning that so many companies are in Arizona, and I didn't know it. Medford, M3 Tactical, and Jack Wolf Knives, and I remember from one of your interviews, that Doug Ritter lives here. Yes, indeed, he does. And how cool is that? Uh, I mean, well, to me, I find it cool. Part of uh, what I love doing about these interviews on the podcast is uh, meeting people, finding out what their business model is. Oftentimes, it's family. I love that, too. But also just connecting in a wider way to where people come from. And uh, I'm always proud and thrilled to find out that there's an Ohio connection with uh, various designers and makers uh, that I like. Uh, well, Dirk Pinkerton, one of them. Uh, so I, I totally get the state pride. So I'm glad you're you're finding value and having fun with the show, Jason Scott. And thank you, one and all, who watched and commented this past week. It's greatly appreciated. All that said, let us now get to a pocket check. Haven't been able to get this out of my pocket since I got it at Blade Show 2024. This is the Alan Elishowitz Les George Eck folder. It's an integral folder, and that's actually part of the name. Uh, George Elishowitz Eck integral folder. This is my first um, integral. And if you don't know what that is, that means that the whole handle, including the lock and everything, is milled out of one solid piece of titanium, not... Um, not put together uh, with a with uh, two sides and a backspacer or standoffs. It's just one solid piece. So it's difficult in terms of engineering and it's expensive in terms of materials and time on the machine, on the mills. Um, also, not for nothing, I'm sure it's probably uh, somewhat more difficult to design too, though I've, I've actually asked that question of people and they, they claim it isn't. Uh, but you still have to figure out a way to get the action in and out of the handle without taking it apart and here you can see gaps here and you can see um the action in there you can see the uh the pivot that pivot is wide so maybe it's something there maybe it's uh in the width of the pivot and those uh, access points i don't know not planning on taking it apart this comes in two different blade uh shapes one is a nearly fully flat ground with a slight swedge and then this is their dagger ground uh which is a you know bayonet style uh, meaning you've got uh, you've got two bevels, but one is unequal uh, and a little bit shorter, the one on top. In this case, to accommodate that thumb ramp, I mean that uh, thumb disc and a place to put your your thumb. This thing is so comfortable, and uh, it's echoing a very uh, famous and um, well, a very famous combat knife from history, the Eck combat knives, uh, daggers and clip points. Um, and if you know those knives, you'll see all the references in the handle, the three large handle bolts, the four scooped chamfers on the side, the, um, strike, not the striations, but you know, the, the lines where you would have slots in the handle. Some, some of them were stacked leather. Uh, many of them were stacked leather. Others were flat slabs of uh, wood. So very, very cool knives from history that I don't have. I've always wanted an Eck. Uh, I will get one someday. Uh, but this, in the meantime, will do. And man, I love it. It's also my first knife with that sort of flame anno job. So beautifully done. I bought it from uh, the Elishowitz table. Alan Elishowitz and Les George were, and Devi uh, Defiant 7, I almost said Deviant 7, were all in one row. So it was just 
one beautiful knife dagger combat something or other or exquisite custom fixed blade by uh, Alan Elishwitz after another. So very impressive. And I love that knife if you didn't get that. Uh, next up, this is another one I love. And this is a pocket dropper. Uh, this has just been going in the bottom of my pocket, even horizontal like this. It's just the right size that it doesn't bother me. This is the American Blade Works uh, slip joint. Does not have a too too much of a fancy name, but that's what it is. And it's it's under it's about five about five and a half inches. Let's see. Yeah, it's about five and a half inches overall, and it just fits so well in the pocket. It's nice and light. It it's sort of a companion piece to the Model Two uh, with that with that titanium milling. That's so slick. I love that. I love the look of this thing, just like I love the look of the Model 2. They remind me of, well, the Model 2 reminds me of an of an old train. And this, not an old train, like an Art Deco train poster. I don't know. That's sort of uh, weirdly specific. But uh, this kind of falls into the same camp for me. A very, very thinly ground, hollow ground Magna Cut blade. And um, this is 6364 Rockwell hardness um, for the finicky. Uh, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be. I'm just not. But for the finicky with with uh, heat treats, uh, we know that American Blade Works does it positively right. Uh, this has really good action, especially for a first slip joint. And what I mean by that is like I could see I could see improvement coming in terms of crisp crispness. Uh, but but let me just say, uh, for a first slip joint, um, it way beats the the first attempt of Benchmade to make a slip joint. It's like way better than the proper in terms of its action and well everything else. But um, you know, so if a if if this lone wolf, uh, i.e., uh, Michael Martin of American Blade Works, can come out with his first slip joint and and outclass a big company, I know this was a few years back though. Uh, but coming out with their first slip joint, it's the sign of success. I love this thing. It was only 150 bucks, and a lot of people I bumped into. Shane, edgy American, was the guy who hit me to it, and I ran over and got it. Only 150 bucks, and then it went like hotcakes. He brought like I don't know, 25 of them or something, and they sold like that. They are great. I love them. Can't wait to see more uh, from from uh, more slip joints from them. Next up on my belt, another one I haven't been able to get rid of. Not that I want to get rid of it, but I uh, haven't been switching this out for much lately, except for the Nova 2. And this is the T. Kell Knives Agent 001, my design collaboration with Tim Kell of T. Kell Knives, who is just awesome um, in every way I know so far. He's a great guy. He's a great business owner and entrepreneur, and um, he is knows how to make knives so well. I love his knives. You know, I've been a big fan of TKL knives for a few years now. Um, it all started when Dave of OG Blade Works loaned me one of one of his knives, and I was like, oh yeah, this is sweet. Um, very, very honored to do this collaboration with him. Um, it was going like hotcakes at Blade Show, which was it was so thrilling for me to just see uh, that I, I gave other knife nerds some joy with my design collaboration with Tim Kell. And man, he just did, so, they just did a beautiful job making this. Uh, I have two of them with the double edge, one with the single edge. And uh, this this purple one is my my baby. This is the one I carry all the time. Uh, I got my my maker or my logo on there and Tim Kell's T. Kell Knives Maker's Mark there. Super sharp on both sides. I mean, ridiculously sharp and uh, very ergonomic and, uh, you know, I love the knife. What can I say? Another one I love is uh, unex not unexpected. Unexpected. I'm going to say it. Uh, it's not unexpected that I love a Jack Wolf knife, but it was unexpected that Ben Belkin would come out with a small slip joint knife. I mean, I'm sorry, a small fixed blade knife, and that I would basically be crazy about it. First of all, let's talk about the the blade, and then we'll talk about the beautiful sheath. Three inch blade, the same size as. I'm sorry, that's not three inch. Yeah, it is. Just shy of three inch. A three inch sheep's foot blade, uh, full height hollow ground like the Midnight Jack and the After Hours Jack. And this, this one here is stonewashed. Uh, please forgive the writing on my hand. Stonewashed beautifully, very nice and thin. A great utility knife, short handle. So overall, six inches. 
And that handle is for some three fingers. For me, it's about, I can get four fingers on there on this uh, last little slope there in the coffin handle on the back. But like Ben and like many, I prefer a little fob on there. And it, it helps in drawing the blade and it also helps in retention. Also, you can come back on the blade a little bit if you need to. Um, this I have been carrying in my back pocket and I've been loving how it's breaking in the sheath here. Something you have to be aware of with this knife uh, is that it's unlike, um, unlike say a bushcraft knife that has a pouch style sheath like this, where you just kind of uh, put the sheath in and it doesn't, this is ambidextrous and he worked very hard at making it so, uh, but you have to be careful not to jam it in too far. My um, inclination with this kind of sheath, these pouch sheaths is to really push the knife in there and because uh, that's left over from walking around outside with a knife that doesn't have a strap on it, like I really have to push it in there, make sure it's, but you don't have to with this. And I made the mistake absentmindedly uh, once of pushing this through the leather down here. It didn't, didn't uh, damage any of the um, stitching or anything, but just a tiny little bit of it poked out through there. I was just kind of absentmindedly pushing it into my pocket. And that's what happened. Uh, this, uh, of course, is a, uh, like, Double black, he didn't call it that, but it's like a very black linen micarta. I love it. The color is excellent. Bronzed screws there holding it all together. And all meant to be a little bit smaller than an opened uh, slip joint. So the handle is a little bit smaller. And you make up for it with a with this kind of lanyard. Um, so this is what I had on me. What did you have on you today? I had the uh, Alishowitz George Eck Integral. I had the American Blade Works Slip Joint, the Decal Knives Agent 001, and the Jack Wolf Knives Fix EDC for emotional support. And let me tell you, it did bring that in spades. All right. Uh, as I take these away and put them away, uh, maybe you can think about what you're going to drop in the comments. Uh, let me know what you're carrying today. Uh, give me some inspiration. I've been actually... Uh, lately thinking it would be awesome to have me a brand new Spyderco Military 2 like I was going to get myself when it first came out and then bitterly turned away. Thanks, Blade HQ. All right, uh, next up, I just want to remind those gentlemen junkies and those who think they might want to become one, uh, what you stand to gain this month if you win. Uh, this is the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife of Ju of June 2024, the Eutectic Trinity. Eutectic, the affordable line, the mm, high value line, we'll say, of Liang Ma. We all know Liang Ma is a is a sought after designer who has made some really great knives in the Eraser. That was his first one. Came out with CRKT to a huge blitz. Uh, he's a former chef, awesome guy, uh, but designs great pocket knives and everyday utility knives. Uh, his big famous one is the um is the field duty i love that one i have it in the eutectic form um but this one is a really cool flipper uh clip point i love the shape of that blade here hold it upside down so you can really see the shape somehow for some reason uh blade shapes always look um i don't know it's they're easier to gauge when they're upside down for some reason love this knife uh this could this could be yours uh, gentleman junkie, if that's what you are, uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan the QR code on the screen when that comes up and it will take you right there. Um, and you'll see what you get. Uh, love to have you. Uh, if not just keep watching and share the show with a friend that always helps as well. All right, coming up, we got knife life news for exciting uh, stories, including the blade show awards coming up on the knife junkie podcast. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, RMJ was able to restock us with their Sparrow Fixed Blade. The Full Tang Nitro V Blade has a contoured G10 handle, and the Kydex sheath includes a detachable clip plate. This forged 52100 blade is fitted with a variety of wood handles, all hand-selected and stabilized by Lon Humphrey. He builds these pieces of functional art at his shop in Ohio and the element by talented custom bladesmith and blade designer Jason Knight. This production, EDC The Element, is now in stock. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. 
thenifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, first up on Knife Life News, you've seen the Jack Wolf Knives Fix EDC right here in my hands. Uh, but I uh, want to tell you a little bit of more, a uh, little bit more about this very unique Jack Wolf Knives uh, release. And uh, well, as you as you can remember, if you if you know Jack Wolf Knives, it comes out it in a variety of handle materials and blade finishes. Uh, this time we have a really cool radial pattern uh, titanium with blue um, screws, and that is sort of evocative of the Chris Reeve knives. Um, those old umnum zons with the with the radial patterns. Uh, you've got the black micarta, which is great to see micarta coming back. He said his uh, his micarta fans are relentless, and uh, basically demanded it, so he came back with that beautiful purple um, fat carbon. And then you've got ultim, and then at the bottom, that's a uh, traditional knives, a traditional pocket knives exclusive in abalone. So a really uh, fantastic and beautiful looking knife there um what's more uh s90v as per usual and um everything else about this is unusual uh that that beautiful ambidextrous sheath and then the super super tight clip that was something very important to ben in designing this is that half of a fixed blade knife is the sheath really you do have to focus so much on that because people will not carry a knife if it's got a bad sheath it's a fixed blade so uh spent a lot of time on that making it ambidextrous and crushed it i love this knife it is now available as of this past friday if you're listening to this when it drops so go check it out check out the different options and uh we'll see if any of them strike your fancy all right, next up, I want to talk about Blade Show Awards. Uh, that's always exciting to see who won what. Uh, when you go into Blade Show, there's always a giant cabinet, uh, kind of a big square lit up cabinet, and you walk all the way around it. You can see all of the knives that have been entered in to win the various uh, awards. And so I just want to go through the first one. Uh, I want to go through the production knife awards so uh, let me get this queued up and i'll just read these off and uh it's not so bad on the production knife end of things but when we get to the customs i will probably be butchering some names so apologies in advance uh but overall knife of the year the spartan blades harsey clandestina and i will not editorialize except to say that that knife in particular is so sweet i wish it were less expensive only because i'd get I'd get one in, in a heartbeat. Uh, a beautiful Harsey uh, fixed blade design. American made fixed blade of the year, the McNeese Knives Ridge Runner. American made folding knife of the year, the Protec TR3. And I believe that's a non auto um, version of that awesome knife. Most innovative American design, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 Salt. I'm not sure about that. Maybe that's because they put magna cut on a parrot parrot two and change the handle a little bit that's a little strange but anyway uh we got imported fixed blade of the year giant mouse gmf1 imported folding knife of the year lion steel skinny most innovative imported design crkt fial uh best that's that corkscrew knife how cool uh, be, uh by princeton wong best buy of the year civivi yonder kitchen knife of the year qsp kiritsuki kiritsuke Knife Collaboration of the Year, Ketuo Knife and Ken Onion Buckhorn. Manufacturing Quality Lion Steel Investor, Collector Knife of the Year, Protec Oligarch. PVK Automatic Knife of the Year is the Kershaw Livewire. That's a really cool out the front. All right, next up, I want to talk about the custom. And some of these I saw. I mean, I saw most of the production ones, but it's really cool to see some of the uh, custom ones. And, and for me, Lurkwin. Uh, he's on here twice, um, Samuel Lurkwin, and he goes by uh, War Dog Knives, I think, on Instagram. His stuff is incredible. All right. So, again, forgive me for any sort of uh, mispronunciations. This first one, best of show and best folder from Evan Nicolaitis, recently on the show, Esnick, Esnick's Knives Angler. Do yourself a favor, look up that knife on Instagram, Evan Nicolaitis. It was stunning, and I didn't get to see it in person. Um, 
And by didn't get to, I just didn't get to, but I wanted to. But that thing is amazing. Best of show contender, Jean-Louis Regal with a Bowie. Best art knife, Fabio Barros with a dagger. Best kitchen knife, Jordan uh, Lamoth either with a Mojave or his last name is Mojave. Uh, best Bowie, Samuel Lurkwin. Best collaboration, superlative. That's Javi Garcia, Enrique Pena, and Jared Oser, three like luminaries for their cannibal phantom lock. Best Damascus is Romel Fernandez. Best fighter, Seth Lopez. Best fighter contender, Samuel Lurkwin again. Best fixed blade, Harvey Dean Dogbone Dagger. Best Mac, that's Machine Assisted Custom Knife. I believe last year was the first time we saw that category. Sergey Shurigorov with the MIDI Q. Best Folder Contender, Vogued Knives uh, Folding Tonto. Best Handle Design, Vogued Knives Persian Folder. Best New Maker, Bobby House. Best Sword, Vince Evans. Italian Schiavona, that's a cool sword. Best Tactical Folder, Dmitry Sinkovich Pike. Every Dmitry Sinkovich is awesome, but this one is outstandingly awesome. Best Utility Hunter, Diana Tom, Franco Jaeger. Most Innovative Design, Carlos Kieris with the TRS Thorn. Best Miniature, Ridian Gatrill, Mini Barlow with Scrimshaw. Best Slip Joint, Ridian Gatrill, Lockback Riddler. Well, I want to congratulate everyone who is on those lists and also just everyone who was at Blade Show. They say that not they. Who was it? Roosevelt? It's the man in the arena that counts. The man or the woman. We have altered that for my my daughters. But whenever anyone is, uh, you know, looks down at their nose at someone in a competitive field and says, oh, I could do better. Well, are you doing better? And are you there? These are the people that showed up and. Uh, these look, these are the people who won. So congratulations, one and all. All right, last up in Knife Life News, Boker. They have a new one coming up. And what's unusual but about this is that we usually hear from Boker's Boker Plus line. Uh, but today we're going to talk about a new knife that's coming out from their Solingen line. And just off the top of my head, it, it this seems to me something to maybe compete with the bug out, you know, and the RSK Mark one and those kind of, uh, those kind of knives. Uh, this one is the everyday duty knife or EDK. And like I said, it's from their Solingen line, Solingen, Germany, uh, where they, you know, originate from, um, the, FR, okay, so the handle is FRN. Kind of, no, I, that was unexpected. Beautiful chevron pattern, though. It's got a sort of crossbar lock. It's a drop point. It comes in a drop point like you see there or a Tonto in Magna Cut. So cheap handle, awesome steel. That's that's the part that, that makes me think of the RSK Mark I uh, because the RSK knives, that's, that's how they began uh, life as a super steel on an inexpensive, uh, at the time, griptilian handle. So I feel like this is kind of in the same um, um, a design envelope or something like that. Um, I like the look of this one with the uh, with the Tonto blade. It's got a deep, it's got a fold over uh, pocket clip, but not so deep carry. Uh, and that is spring steel. And this will be available soon. So if anyone gets this knife, and um, you know, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear from you if you get that knife and check it out. Is it, do you think, supposed to be a, an RSK Mark I buster or something to compete with that knife or the bug out? Do let me know. All right, coming up here in a second, we're going to do the state of the collection. I'll show you a couple of really awesome new knives that have come my way even since Blade Show. They were on order beforehand. They showed up, and uh, I have them to show you here. Uh, until then, uh, sorry about that. Uh, be sure to check us out on Patreon and uh, also be sure to check us out on Thursday Night Knives, especially tomorrow night for the uh, Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. All right, I got it out. I had to ma make a reminder. All right, coming up here uh, is the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, first up, this is one that I ordered a while ago, and uh, these knives take a little bit of time to make, uh, but man, is it worth the wait. 
and it wasn't that long. Uh, this is the TKL Knives FLN. This is the design collaboration with Jared Neve of Neve's Knives. Sorry, I had to turn off the light there. Jared Neve of Neve's Knives, and it is meant to be a dedicated self-defense knife, and no doubt this awesome knife would do great at that. Of course, it's a karambit. You got the ring, you got the sickle-shaped blade, and you have it set up for that edge forward. Um, in the hand, in a natural fist, without doing anything, it fits so well. This is a really nicely um, ergonomic karambit. And um, Tim, to me, is one of the few makers who makes very ergonomic rings on his knives, whether it's the Night Stalker or this here FLN. The alignment of the fingers is always perfect. It's not compromised. And I feel like this knife, you could get a bigger hand on for sure. Look, you see all the this extra space. You get a, a bigger hand on there and sink some pretty chunky fingers uh, into this blade before you need to up, up the size of your karambit. Uh, really nice handle as usual with the grenade grip. Uh, in this case, this is called the Black Hawk. It's a black and um, purple alternating um, G10. Sorry, <laughs> brain lock there. Uh, different from the swirl. They, do, they have a lot of these burl uh, G10s too, where you have the two different colors, in this case, also black and purple, but it's swirled together. It's not in um, rigid layers like that. I like both looks, especially uh, with the grenade grip pattern in there. Uh, this is AEBL. Wait, is it? Yeah, this is AEBL, and it is uh, nickel boron coated. You can also get this knife in a black. Um, I'm not sure if it's acid stone or acid... I'm not sure how it's blackened. Uh, it's not like Cerakote or something like that, uh, but it's nice and dark. And I think those are slick too um, in terms of the nickel boron coating. Just a beautiful knife. So psyched to finally have this in my collection. Um, and then I set it up with the discrete carry concepts clip. Just goes up like on the belt like that. And then I wear this on the front. So if this is my center line here and this is my belt just kind of comes like this and the edge of my body is right there. So it doesn't really print, uh, but it draws very nicely in, in that reverse grip. Not for nothing. This would make an excellent uh, forward, by the way, forward grip. You don't have to know how to use a karambit in, in the traditional C-lot martial arts sense. You can kind of hold it like this and intuitively claw away all you want. Um, but just a great knife. I, I can't recommend... TKL knives uh, strongly enough. Of course, I'll tell you the best one they have is the Agent 001, but then I would just be uh, biased because I love everything they have, especially the Night Stalker. That's that's what really inspired the design of this knife was the Night Stalker. So very enamored with those knives. Next up, this is just for historical record. Uh, I have the, I just, well, recently since last we spoke on this show, got the Jack Wolf knives fixed EDC. Not going to say anything more about it. This is just a historical record that this is new. All right, putting it away and letting it rest. This is a great knife. Good office knife. Really good office knife. Um, okay. And lastly here, I got the... Uh, this is a prototype of a knife that was just released at Blade Show. This is the uh, Banhara by Dirk Pinkerton. And it's part of the Nomad family. Uh, the Kaiser Nomad was a very popular upswept uh, Persian blade with a with a similar handle like this, but uh, longer, more drawn out. I got to say, man, the the uh, ergonomics of this are awesome. There were big posters of this everywhere at Blade Show, and it definitely caught my eye. But having it in hand and looking at it in person is a different experience. This is a very very gnarly and interesting knife gnarly because it, it you know i always go back to the tactical that upswept blade but the point is not above the spine which i like and it's got a great belly and the ergonomics are just astoundingly good on this in reverse grip i mean in forward grip and in reverse grip but especially in forward grip to me um wh where was i going with this uh 
well, uh, oh yeah. So the difference between this, which is that really curvy upswept, um, sort of middle Eastern blade versus, uh, uh, versus the Main Street, for instance, one of his very popular sheep's foot slash Warncliffe knives. Uh, it just kind of shows you the the width and breadth of his design, of Dirk Pinkerton's design prowess. He's like, he's really good in a lot of different uh, realms, including custom handmade knives, which I'm a collector of his stuff. Um, but I love this new one, uh, the Banjar, and uh, no doubt it is uh, based on, on some fierce Middle Eastern uh, desert fighting knives. Uh, titanium, of course, with a really nice milling. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So, oh, and you got the classic Dirk Pinkerton jimping, the little cup scoops out there. All right, so that does it for the state of the collection. Uh, that, by the way, is not mine, um, but uh, from this, I mean, it's a, it's his prototype of, of the knife, but uh, no doubt the production version is awesome is awesome oh by the way i just have to mention uh detent optimized definitely for that finger flick and for thumb flicking really really great for that okay artisan bonjar all right now i want to talk about uh, a a knife adjacent topic uh things that i love that are not necessarily knives but you carry them for self-defense uh, as EDCs. They also might double as something else, but really that's what they're there for. Um, and case in point, we'll start with a with a strong, strong contender for my favorite, and that is the Wingard Wearables Dick Pick. A, a funny name, but not a very funny tool. It is a very uh, useful and deadly tool. Uh, primary use for this is an elongated finger, uh, if you ask um, Zach Wingard of Wingard Wearables. He he loves spikes, um, and the main reason he likes that is because you can do all these things with a spike that you want to do with your finger or that you try to do with your finger. In this case, uh, scratch, reach, poke, stab, and in this case back here, pry and pound and, uh, what do you call it, separate uh, with this very sharp, uh, claw here. So you, you, to me, of course, I think of this primarily as something I would use for self-defense, but when I carry it, lo and behold, I've never used it for self-defense, knock on wood, but I have used it to take out staples. This is awesome for removing staples. I've used it to carb, uh, coffee cups. You know, you buy a coffee cup and the little tiny carburetor hole isn't enough to get a good solid flow of coffee into your maw. So I always poke a big hole in it. This is a great thing for that. Um, lots of real practical purposes uh, for this thing. But if you needed it in a pinch, uh, you could definitely go to town with it. It's not my story to tell, but I do know that this has been used uh, in defense against an animal that was uh, out, out of hand. Uh, and worked to great effect. So it is a serious tool to be taken seriously, uh, but it's not just for fighting. It's not just for sticking. Uh, it's for all sorts of, all manner of um, use. I know that uh, it's used often as a scribe. Uh, this is 420J, I believe, 420J steel. Very cool knife. And uh, I mean, a very cool implement here. And also a great Kydex sheath. <clears throat> the one thing I would do to this sheath, if I weren't carrying it in uh, the waistband, which is what I do, is I would make this little scoop here a little bit tighter so that it's more of a hook. And then when pulling it out of the pants, if it was just loose in the pants pocket, you could draw it on the side with the hook. That's the Wingard wearables um dick pic there's a there's a magnum that's very large and there's a mini that's diminutive okay next up this this is one of my oldest things uh here well it's definitely the oldest thing here by far um and this is a 1990s kubaton i got this in 97 98 or 99 at a um brooklyn new york uh, martial arts shop and uh i've carried i carried it for a long time. All of my keys were on this for a long time uh, when I lived in New York. And then th it, they would reside in my back pocket next to my wallet. And I could pull it out. I had it all set up where I could pull it out, 
with my thumb through the ring and then have it ready to go like this. And then also, if you hold something like this with keys on the other end, it can become a flail. So I would practice hitting things with my keys. Back then, I didn't have a car because I was living in New York City. So I didn't have a, uh, a car key fob to worry about smashing if I had to hit someone in the face with it. Uh, it was just keys. And so I'd figure out which way the teeth were going on the keys and try and swing it that way um, in my imaginary fights. Uh, but you can see how much the paint has worn off uh, this thing over time. I like Kubatons. Um, they're just sticks. Sometimes they're called Makiwaras. Is that right? Makiwara? Or maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe that's a punching board. I can't remember now. But uh, just a, a fist load, basically. Something to load in your fist, not only to strengthen your punch, but, but primarily to use in a hammer fist to just uh, rain down pain on whoever, whoever dares you know, to step to you. Really like the Kubaton. And this one, of course, I'm just attached to because it's, it's old. All right, next up. This one I love, but I have a little difficulty with, and it's the size. I got to say, this is a 12-inch, uh, when deployed, ASP expandable baton. Um, this one is an ASP. I have another one that's a, a cheapo, and I got to say, I like that one better. Uh, but at the 12-inch level, or 12-inch size like this, here, I'm not even going to attempt to close it here, uh, it does two things. It, it's really hard to deploy because it's so small. There's like very little leverage. That's why I attach this loop of paracord so I can uh, kind of choke down on the handle and get a little more leverage to deploy this, this tight fitting uh, barrel out or tight fitting um, baton out. Uh, as you go larger in size, like Asp is the expensive, awesome brand. I, my dad has a nice big one and it works great. But I think as you get smaller in size, it's the physics of it are just hard because uh, these are supposed to nest into one another really tightly and create a, you know, a, a baton. And that, this is what Nancy Kerrigan got uh, got in the knees back then in uh, in the Olympics. This is what she was hit with, except larger. This is what cops carry. Um, but yeah, in this 12 inch size, a little difficult. But I do love the expandable baton. Uh, I think with all of these things, uh, you have to be careful about your uh, locality and that kind of thing. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, next up is the Revenant Core Sharpie. And this thing is uh, just a, a dream. <laughs> it's so cool. It, it looks exactly like a Sharpie. And yet it isn't. It's got a sharpened G10 um, top right here. So where you would where you would be using this to write, it's got sharpened G10 instead of felt. Sorry, that came out awfully awkwardly. I chose this lavender purple pen uh, because that's not a color I ordinarily use. So it was recommended to me by the gentleman who runs Revenant Core to, to pick something that is not in my usual. Uh, carry. I got, I got something. Uh, okay, I guess not. Uh, so that, along with a ventilator pen, um, which I've made before out of a bic, you can just kind of make it into a syringe where you can easily pull out the the ink, and then the barrel itself is uh, carved at an angle, so what makes it easier to stick it into someone when you need to. Now, this I have read. Uh, anecdotes on Instagram where people have been busted with these, but it's very, very rare as far as I know, because, uh, you know, it just, there's so much going through the eyes of TSA that something like this isn't really setting off alarms. Uh, though I have heard that, uh, someone in the know kind of picked it out and said, uh, yeah, you can't fly with that thing. So if that happens and you actually happen to lose it, it's just 30 bucks. Uh, check out Revenant Core. They have awesome, like I said, these Sharpies, but also really great G10 self-defense um, tools. Little pick call things, little pick call stabbies with uh, Sukamaki wrap and that kind of thing. Just really, really nicely done. Uh, okay, next up, this is from Station 9. And these are so cool. Station 9 is known for creating weapons and 
um, tools, but mostly just weapons uh, that were used in World War I and in World War II by resistance and also by the uh, various armies and, and that kind of thing. Uh, this right here is the SOE dagger. I say armies and that kind of thing. What I was getting at is they also have um, knuckle dusters from like the Hungar Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, or Austro-Hungarian Army um, and other things that aren't just knives. Okay. Uh, but this one is the only knife in the list and it is Station 9. These tiny little lapel daggers were so cool, so handy, and they... Of course, in the old day, they were leather sheaths, but they would sew them into the pockets of their pants or sew them behind the lapel of their jacket or sew them into the inside uh, breast pockets of their jackets so that they could uh, remove it in a pinch and have a tiny little wicked sharp blade. Uh, this one, I like to have this cordage on because you can kind of hide it in your hand and then you can flip it out and have it have it to bear right there and that jimping those lines of jimping are super super rigid so that you can really grip tight and um, jam it into whatever you're trying to jam it into because it's such a sharp dagger that uh, you can really um, you can really get this buried into things i i used to have we had last summer someone brought over a watermelon that never got eaten and I went to town on it, and this just did great. And then, of course, I, I walked on, and it started to get nasty. And uh, and then my wife was like, what are all these little cuts? And I was like, I don't, I have, I don't have any idea what those are from. And she knew I was lying. Uh, but th this, this and the other um, Station 9 implements are super awesome. Um, so I highly recommend them. Next up, uh, this is a... A razor, a common everyday razor uh, that you can get at your at your local hardware store or anywhere. Uh, these just happen to be done up by erroneous blades, and he gave me one of these both years uh, last year at Blade Show when I met him, and this year, and I really like them. Um, I was talking with Fred Perrin, who is a self defense expert, a former French commando, total badass, and. This is what he carries when he travels. Of course, not one that's all fancy like this, but he'll go somewhere and pick one of these up and carry it around. And he was showing how he deploys it right off of his leg. He'll just hit it on his leg and, you know, swipe your throat or come close. And uh, I just like it because they are so bare bones. They are so down and dirty. Um, and these happen to be really nice examples of it. Thank you very much, Aaron, for these. I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so those are razors. You'll see a lot of utility razors, uh, knife knife companies like Civivi, like um, uh, Riot, and making these fancy utility knives. And people need them, people use them, and so there's a reason why they're being made like this. But I kind of like just the regular plain one. Uh, that you get at the hardware store because you can have it on you and if someone you know if you get busted with it it's like uh, it really is a work tool as opposed to some of these other knives we have here on the table okay speaking of knives next one is sort of a knife i got this at the fudo forge table last year and it is i call it a scalpel it is a little knife <laughs> let me just admit jute cord wrap i put on there and burned it i love the look of burned jute cord wrap and then this just drops in the pocket. I made a little tiny sheath for it. Drops in there. And again, like the other one I was talking about, this will just grab onto the side of the pants. And when you pull it, it will, you know, it will just slide right out with it in hand, uh, with the knife in hand like this. And of course, I like to have it turned around for a little bit of that Pical style uh, action there. But you don't have to. And this also, by the way, uh, this is a company, Fudo Forge, th that makes really outstanding chef's knives, at least from what I can see. And these were little scrap knives they had on the table for 30 bucks last year. And they are so, this is so useful. It's so sharp. I, you know, when I was making this list, I almost forgot uh, that it's a knife. I think of it a little bit more like that dick pic. It's kind of something in my pocket that I 
don't use much until I need it. And then, um, you know, throw it back in. This has a very um, primitive look to it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, with that jute cord. Uh, the, but this next one is very primitive looking, uh, jute cord or no, and that is the Wingard Wearables Quill. This great knife, or <laughs> gosh, I'm so used to saying knife here on this show. This great implement here it looks to me like a hook like a a, a a south pacific fish hook of some sort uh but it's really a do everything again sort of finger extension albeit smaller than the dick pick um yes it works great as a weapon um punch punch with it in your fit in your hand like this or do a hammer fist like this uh, you can do a lot of different sort of self-defense techniques with this little hook but i've carried this a lot and just dropping it in the pocket it gets used a lot again staples and carbon coffee cups and scribing things and scratching and and this thing just comes in terrifically handy it's also a great worry stone kind of item you know you can't help but have it in your hand and manipulate it move it around it feels good and then you have at the tip here a very sharp sort of diamond I mean, that can be used for lots of different things. And then here you have this flat end that acts kind of like a pry. To me, the jute cord really makes it more easy to manipulate. There's a, a larger one and there's a thinner one. So there, there are different models of this. This is the standard one and with that juke cord it really fits the hand fills the hand nicely and uh yeah i love this thing great to have in pocket all right next up this one i made for myself and um i made a few of them and sent them out to people just as thank you gifts and stuff uh but this is a g10 picall blade so kind of a blade but really a a uh, self-defense implement something that you can uh you can use forcefully against someone who's being forceful with you. It is a chisel ground blade here, a Pical style blade. These edges are somewhat sharp. I wouldn't want to get swiped at with these. Uh, they won't hold an edge, but you can always make them sharp again with sandpaper. That's the cool thing about these G10 weapons uh, or pokey things is that you can actually use these for uh, utility in terms of like opening boxes and things that you would use your keys for, uh, for instance, it's not going to slice any cheese or anything like that. Um, again, I added that jute cord on there for grip just to give it a little bit of thickness. Uh, the intention is to drop this in the pocket and then you can always just pull it out super easily. Uh, one, one, caveat about this sheath i made this for uh slip joints and my buck 110 so if i were to make this for true clandestine or not clandestine but non-permissive environment carry i wouldn't have a metal grommet there i would uh, i'd make a sheath without that and have it all be fabric leather g10 all right last up in this list this is a unique one this comes from bastinelli creations and i got this last year at blade show it's a rosary and here you've got uh what looks like i like to pretend it's saint michael or i like to think it's saint michael and uh you know slayer of dragons and uh it's a rosary and it's a rosary on um kevlar kevlar cord so it's strong enough that you could if you needed to uh, you could choke someone with this. Uh, heaven forbid, you know, you're on your knees, your sword is in front of you, stuck in the ground, you're praying for safety in battle, and then someone, you know, jumps you and you it turns into a wrestling match. Well, you can take this and 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 save yourself with it. Uh, you can also swing it and use this saint as a sort of flail. Uh, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, I, I've become substantially more. Um, I don't want to say substantially more religious, but I've become progressively more religious since I've gotten this. And I do love it. I don't, it hasn't been blessed, I don't think, unless he had it blessed. But uh, just the thought of, you know, you're not supposed to really wear one around your neck. 
Uh, and the thought of using a rosary as a weapon is a little twisted, but I, I, I got to say, I love it. <laughs> I do. So uh, there it is. That's the Bastinelli, um, Bastinelli rosary. We'll call it St. Michael. Uh, I, you know, I also have knuckle dusters. Uh, those have been, uh, I've loaned those out, so I don't have them here to show you, but, uh, got the, the, uh, the spooky pockets and the, um, uh, station nine Austro-Hungarian knuckle dusters, all really, really cool. Um, but I do favor, I love these kind of, uh, knife adjacent little pocket EDC slash weapon slash tools. Um, so do you, let me know, drop it in the comments below. What kind of implements like this do you like, do you carry? I know a lot of people carry picks of some sort, spikes of some sort. Um, and I think that that's pretty cool. So let me know. Uh, what I don't ever understand are the fidget things, uh, but I'm sure there are plenty of things that people don't get about me. So tell me the kind of things you carry, even if it's something I don't get like fidget and uh, tell me why, you know? Let me know. Let's let's uh, let's start the dialogue. Alrighty, that does it for me this week. Be sure to join us on Sunday for episode fit five fifteen with Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives, where we break down the process of designing and making this knife, the uh, the Jack Wolf Knives Fix EDC. He's an old friend of the show. He's been on many times, and I always love checking in with him. He's one of the most interesting people uh, we talk to here, and uh, it's interesting to hear the tribulations of making of going from slip joint making to fixed blade making all right that does it for me and jim who's working his magic behind the switcher my name is bob demarco and until i see you next time don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website thenifejunkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on youtube at thenifejunkie.com slash youtube check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash instagram and join our facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash facebook and if you have a question or comment email them to bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast